Okay, we're now recording. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining the KCP community call today. Um, just as a brief note, we have a code of conduct for the project and that also obviously extends to the community meeting. So be nice and abide by that code of conduct. Okay, uh, let's walk through the, uh, the meeting agenda. Um, the first agenda point is from Stefan regarding using Google Doc. And I think we had a poll on the Slack channel about this as well, right? We did, and I think the result was people want to stay with the issue. I think so. Let's see. Okay, wait. Let's take a quick look. Anybody find it? Oh, here it is. Okay. So it appears the majority was for Google Doc, actually. There were seven votes for okay. Google Doc and three for GitHub. Yeah, so I would say let's let's try Google Doc, see how it goes, and we can reconsider in a few weeks, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm going to write down notes in GitHub because I'm not sure we can find the, uh, like, I'm not sure exactly where we should put it in Google Docs. So I think we should create some folder for it or something. So I think yeah, the result. We will. Yeah. I'm not sure we, who owns uh, the invite. We can put uh, Google Docs there, give access. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why. Unfortunately, even though, okay, so first of all, does anyone else have thoughts on the Google Docs thing? Is the poll enough for everyone? Any objections to moving to Google Docs? Okay. And I guess we will try to uh, let, we will try to do Google Docs, um, and I will figure out with Sebastian and maybe with you, Stefan, where we should put this. Um, so we have a location to store it where it's accessible to everyone and where it won't get lost. And maybe we can just schedule, like, we try two meetings and then re-decide whether it makes sense to stay on the doc, Google doc, or go back to the issue. So it doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't work. Uh, give Google. OK. Um, and I just realized, um, do we want to look at incoming issues? Uh, because. We haven't done this uh, in the last call. We usually do that at the end as a last topic ah. if there's time. OK, then let's keep um, that tradition. Yeah, and I think we could or we should try it, um, ignore all the TMC ones. But there are many. So, but of course, slow progress at the end. We will go through everything, but it just takes time. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Okay, um, then that's Google Docs. So the next topic is cube binds. And there's a question from Yoon. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm getting names wrong, but... Uh... Yeah, this is correct. <laughs> yeah, so I just have a simple question because I'm trying to bind uh, recently and I realized that there are some similarity between um, cube bind and KCP's API export and API binding in terms of the functionalities. Uh, just, uh, but I'm just a beginner, so I just want to learn more from the high level. Um, how should I understand the relationship between these two set of tools? Yeah, so basically the, the 
plan or the I mean, background of the design was that one workspace in KCP can uh, host one cluster, one cube bind cluster. So we would need the backend, which is aware of KCP, but speaks the language of cube bind. And it would um, create cube uh, cube bind, uh, sorry, API bindings, KCP API bindings when the user selects a resource through the um, connection binding process. And hmm. in, in the KCP workspace, this is dedicated to, to a cluster. So there could also be cluster scoped resources. That was the idea. In, in the queue backend, a cluster has basically access to a namespace, um, what's the name, cluster namespace or something, where the, um, the binding information is stored and there's a request API to create further namespaces, but there's no way in a cube backend to have cluster scope resources. So a task would be to try to build a backend for KCP, I guess, and see whether the cube bind APIs make sense. So we're definitely uh, Stephen, designed can I, can I... that way. Yes. Can I? Um, I'm having a little trouble understanding the question. Maybe I, maybe I'll try to answer my question uh, by restating mm -hmm. what you're saying. Tell me if I've got it right. Um, Cube bind is something that is um, can be used independent of KCP. It's a mechanism that uh, you know works in a plain Kubernetes context uh, for having a clean separation between a service provider and multiple service consumers and separation between the service consumers. And it can be defined, used, exercised in plain Kubernetes with no KCP in sight. And you're also talking now about backends. So I think maybe you're thinking something along the lines of, okay, there could be a backend that in some sense backs on to KCP, API export and binding. Um, so that a um, perhaps a, a multi-cluster aware controller, uh, a service provider, uh, could be written to an API defined by kubebind. Um, and then in an actual deployment, uh, the deployer can choose whether to use the, the, the plain kube backend or the KCP backend. Um, and in either case, the consumers and the provider don't know or care which backend is being used. That was the deployer's choice in terms of how to assemble their system. Have I got that right? Yeah, perfect summary. Please write it down and put it somewhere. Um, so the, um, a few words about the backend. Um, we called it a sample backend. So basically it implements the APIs which are provider size, but it's just really an example. It's nothing more, um, but it's purely cube based it's not kcp aware so basically the idea is to to give the semantics to the cube bind provider side objects but speaking to a kcp cluster and creating workspaces on demand binding on demand all those things but basically the cube bind um, connector like the, the consumer side will not know whether it's a kcp or cube totally agnostic just it sees the api it sees the, the cluster has the, the required permission set it. So for the for the time side, it's uh, irrelevant what is backing that. Okay. Um, now, this may be a little more detailed than the agenda suggests, but I'm not quite sure I understand. Um, when I and I didn't when I read the Kubebind website, it you know, and and watched your your, your KubeCon presentation, I didn't quite clearly get that separation between a Kube bind uh, interface that providers and consumers use versus the back end that the deployers choose. In, in particular, right, what I'm seeing is that the provider knows uh, this structure of workspaces, I'm sorry, namespaces and how they correspond to consumers. Um, and that's an answer that works for namespaced resources. I don't understand what the answer is for a provider that wants to deal with cluster scoped resources in the yeah, consumers. We, we, 
we can talk about that in detail. Um, I'm happy to, to have another meeting for that. So the idea is, and you have to read um, the API documentation of those objects very precisely. Um, the semantics there, which is described and must be implemented by the backend, um, should be independent from Cube or KCP. So the backend will do different things than KCP, but the semantics the user expects, the connector expects from those objects will be basically the same. So, and there are details, and there might even oh, okay. be issues which we have to um, tackle, maybe change the API to make it KCP compatible. Um, this could also be, it's just not built. It's just the design uh, was with KCP in mind, basically hoping that will extend to KCP. Um, you may have had a typo in what you just said. You said the design was with KCP in mind, hoping it would extend to KCP. Yeah, it was built. I mean, it was built with a proof for Cube, but with KCP in mind. So everything okay. built there should be backable by a backend in KCP or against KCP. Thank you. All right. So uh, now we've surfaced maybe a point that I would like to be really clear on. Uh, so you suggest that there should be a discussion of these details somewhere. Where? Right? There is no KCP-bind community? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is Slack channel. We don't have a meeting. So we can organize something. I'm happy to jump on a call and work on something, designing something, sketching something. OK. So I'll take this up at the Slack channel. OK, thank you. OK. Great. Uh, Yun, is your initial question, is that answered? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. OK, great. Uh, then let's move on to the next topic, which uh, happens to be contributing the CD puller to Kubebind and an appropriately modified API gen mic. This is, again, referring to Kubebind, so I'm not sure how much of it would go to that dedicated meeting, but do we want to? Well, there's overlap, right? Because so currently there's this, let's start with the CRD puller, um, right? This is a thing that exists in KCP. Uh, it seems to be a fairly general utility. Um, and who bind is, is an, another, uh, I, I think I, you know, my understanding is kind of in some sense, logically larger community since KCP bind is intended to work with both K, sorry, who bind is intended to work with both KCP and plain kube. The CRD puller is relevant to both of those cases and even more. So it seems to me like something that logically should live in a place of broader applicability than just uh, KCP. I'm not sure Cubebind is the right place. Um, we could put it into one of the orgs, either, I mean, Cubebind or KCP dev in its own repository. It's pretty independent, right? But I see the it is the indeed use like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so let me just put it this way, right? It should be somewhere. Where do we think it should be? I'm I would be pragmatic. I don't. I don't care much. Um, I'm just wondering. Are you trying to solve a particular problem or just to find the different home than current KCP monorepo? Um, I guess in the first place, my question is really to this group. What is your vision of what you want to do with it? I will say from an outside perspective that I think it is something that is useful uh, outside the context of KCP. So I would like to suggest that um, you know it should have. Uh, so first off, people should be able to use it uh, independently of KCP. I think they are, frankly, because it is just a, a command line tool. Um, but that you know suggests to me that it should have some home that makes its broader applicability clear. Um, maybe has a broader. Uh, community um, kind of embedding, uh, you know, I'm not sure. You know, that's, that's kind of the question I'm trying to bring here. It seems to me that the first step of that would be 
maybe moving it to its own repo within the KCP org that it at least is recognized as an independent tool in a way. Let me also ask or suggest there is a Kubernetes SIG that uh, what what is what SIG is in charge of custom resource definitions? Maybe they should own it. Yeah, it's SIG per machinery. Okay, but I'm not sure. I think it's too specific. Like it's it's about syncing, right? No, only when you. No. Yeah. It's, when would it's, you use it? You you would. I mean, you're interested in it if it's not about CRDs. It's about native resources, right? Then it's. Well, it's about it's extracting a CRD description of a native resource, right? Yeah. So, I think arguably, right? The you know the API machinery SIG has long articulated a campaign, right, of moving away from built-in things to using custom resource definitions. This is you know a tool that helps on that campaign. Um, I, if obviously it's not a be-all and end-all in itself. But if you imagine a migration, you know, this is a tool that helps with that migration. I don't disagree. I think SIG is the right place. I'm just fearing uh, discussion about scope and philosophy and can of worms and stuff. So, um. right. I think I would be okay with a separate repo. What I'm worried is a repository explosion because maintaining multiple repositories requires time, rebasing requires time compared to having it within mono repo. So it's just one of those, like we will need to find somebody to stand behind the repository and keep it up to date each and every release. And that's, questions me like within kcp dev there's a certain people group of people within qbind it's different some of them overlap so i don't know yes i, I agree. think i would that, be that's... okay with a separate repository but just question is are we willing to take this this far in terms of maintenance and and it would advance it would advance with Kubernetes releases, not KCP releases, right? David, you have your hand up. Um, yes, just just a question about um, would the schema compatibility uh, utility fall into the same type of case? Because there is also this you know utility which is used in one of the KCP command lines, which boils down to comparing to uh, JSON schemas that might also have a quite, you know, much wider utility than 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 for KCP. Uh, sorry, which utility? Uh, the name is Schema Compat. I think in package in package. This is used uh, in a number of places to to check it's that. It's not a command, right? It's it's a library. It's a library, and I think, if I remember correctly, that it's used in one of the commons, or maybe click commons. Okay. Maybe that, that falls into the same type of, of question. Okay, so I'm not hearing a lot of decisiveness. Um, so I will volunteer to raise this with the API machinery SIG and, and see what their reaction is. If it's favorable, you know, we can go that way. If it's unfavorable, we can go a different way. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. I think at least we can try to make sure that each and every of those tools uh, go install compatible within KCP monorepo so it's easy to consume from outside. And if we see that there is a wider need, we can always pull it out to the external repo. I'm just conscious it's easy to split out. It's always hard to merge back. Yeah, but I mean, this seems to be a reasonable course of action. And um, bringing it up with Zig API machinery would probably at least also gauge people's interest in, in general, right? Even if they don't want to adopt it, maybe it's still, it's still like 
brings some feedback to us. Hey, other would like others would like to use this, so it would make sense to move this to its own repository at the very least. Okay, I think that's as far as we can go here on that one. The other part of my question now was about this um, API gen. Um, actually, that may have been based on a misunderstanding. In KubeBind, there are, um, does the provider have to do API gen or does the provider simply provide the custom resource definition? Right, in, in KCP, uh, there's this API gen that the provider step that the provider has to do to uh, produce these special uh, schema API resource schema objects. Um, and my question, first question should be in kubebind, does the provider also have to generate special schema objects or is that automatic and the provider only provides the custom resource definitions? It's, it's kind of similar because there's also another object which embeds a CAD. So again, so my so I think you're saying the provider does have to actually take a step to create and maintain yeah. these objects in, in Kubine. Yeah. But okay. they are really one to one, so it's super simple, but yes. Right. So so Kubine begs the question for something like KCP's API gen. It's not exactly the same because it's a different, technically different object, but it's it's extremely similar. So if we're uh, if, my my gut feeling is leave that in KCP because in Cupine it's just too simple. It's very trivial. API resource schema is a little different. Right, but a user of KC, I'm sorry, a user of KubeBind can't do anything without generating these objects. Uh, I, I think this is even done by the backend, if I remember right. Something to, to look into the code. Indeed, if it's automatically done, so if the provider only needs to provide the CRD, yeah. then that's the end of the answer. That's the end of the story. If the provider has to do an explicit step, then that begs the question of what tool does the provider use to do that step? Yeah, but the step might be as simple as getting a CRD, change the kind, and create an object, something like that. Even if it's that simple, it would be worth having a you know, an automation, a program of some sort to do it. I think it should be the back end. Uh, end fine. Of okay, so sounds like we're not sure. Let's uh, yeah. find out and then come back to this if necessary. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that concludes uh, this part of the agenda. Yes. Okay, then let's move on. Uh, I have a brief thing that I would like to, to show off and get some feedback on, and that feedback can be async on the community channel. It doesn't need to be now. Uh, but I, after some discussions on Slack, I looked into building a new kcp.io website because the current one we're using is built with a website builder. It's difficult to maintain. And uh, there was the wish to have something that looks a bit more modern. Um, and I looked into that and I came up with a PR that is linked in the meeting notes and I can give a quick demo. This is like pure Hugo, so it's not like any third party tools. Um, and this is how it could look like. Um, this is only the landing page because I didn't want to invest some time into building something that ultimately no one really likes. Um, so some feedback on that would be appreciated. So it try it, it adapted the content we have on kcp.io currently and just put it into a newer design. So I'm just gonna scroll through it. Um, and that's essentially it. It just, it, it's a bit of tailwind. Um, I don't do this by trade. It's kind of a hobby. Um, so yeah. If, if I will be honest, I see Tailwind, I approve. I would go for something like that. It looks quite neat and up to date. OK, 
Okay, great. I mean, um, still like looking uh, for like feedback seems to be over overly uh, positive. So I think I will just continue with building this. Um, it's kind of happening on a low priority because it's obviously not like writing KCP code or something like that. So I will occasionally check in, uh, but I think I'm making progress on this because honestly, it's it's fun in a way. So um, I hope I, maybe in two weeks I have like the whole website converted, but I can't promise anything. Yeah, MJ. So one thing which we currently have in the current web page is the dynamic generated documentation. So I think this is the one thing which I would be a bit reluctant to lose if it's possible. I believe that the documentation right now is also Hugo based, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's... it's independent. So yep. you just have to link them and align the designs that the click on documentation looks okay and then we are fine. Yeah, so we, we could adapt that um, and basically have a shared theme that powers both the landing page with the blog and the documentation, although the documentation would, of course, be more work. Uh, so the question is, do we want to change everything at the same time or do we move bits and pieces? I would go step by step. First, the front page and the block. And then we can see whether this uh, theme is good for documentation, whether the process gets easier. So I think the documentation theme is specialized for documentation. That's why we chose it. So I'm not sure this one is as well. Yeah, to, to, to clarify, this is a theme in like the Hugo sense, but like it, it's self-written. So it's not like pulling in some external theme. So it's definitely not done for documentation yet because, yeah. But yeah. Um, okay, cool. I don't want to spend too much time on that. You can check out the PR. Uh, you can run the website yourself with Hugo um, if you have Node.js and NPM. Uh, but yeah. Um, Eventually, okay, that's it. And I think the next topic on our agenda is Nikita rebasing to Kubernetes 127. Yeah, pretty much whatever is written there. So, what are you talking about rebasing to Kube 127? Uh, and if we have a timeline in mind on when we want to do it, so I'm interested in trying it out this time, probably pairing it with someone and then learning how to do it. And I think that Christoph can say a few things about that, no? Christoph, are you there? Uh, then I'll try to talk about that as best as I can. Um, I know that Christoph started looking into this. Um, I'm not sure if any of the PRs were ready. Um, I believe that we created an epic for that or like an issue. Uh, yeah, there is one here. Um, so um, this ticket exists. I can link it. And as you see, there are some uh, PRs here, but I don't believe that they're all done. Um, they probably need reviews. So I think the timeline on that is as soon as we go back to reviewing these PRs and finishing them, um, I think that's what's going on right now. Got it. I'll, I'll just check with Christoph offline to see if I can help. Rajas. Uh, hey, hi, everyone. I'm Rajas. Uh, I'm, I'm just getting started with KCP and I uh, was wondering if I could also pair on this or just be a shadow to collaborate and things like that just to get started. Definitely. We'll reach out to you, Rajas. Thanks. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay, cool. Yep. I think it makes sense to coordinate on Slack, um, see where Christoph left off things, if there's something to, to take over. 
and then we go from there. Okay. Then the next item that we have is a Nikita TMC related issues. Yeah, so I just wanted to check back on the progress um, where we landed at about moving the TMC related issues to its own repo. Uh, so Madhav had an automated approach that he posted in Slack, but that requires all the TMC related issues to be labeled with like an ADR transfer and multi cluster label. So I wanted to check in how we plan to triage our issues that we have in the KCP repo today. I believe we already have plenty of issues labeled with area multi-cloud, right? Or multi, sorry, multi-cluster. What's it? Transparent multi-cluster, like TMC, okay. Um, so I guess the first step would be to move those that already are labeled appropriately and then see what is left over. And if something was not classified. Yep, MJ? So Currently, that repository is empty because we've been doing most of the TMC work in a in a different fork, in a different repository. I think, fingers crossed, Renox to the woods, we are very close to getting something running out there. So I think, and I will regret this later, we can start moving the issues without the code, basically, as a staging ground there, because this will relax uh, main repository from TMC issues and reduce this, the number of issues for sure. And once we get stuff running, we can, in a separate smaller forum, go for those issues and revisit which is applicable yet to TMC or not, because I'm conscious when the scope changes, implementation maybe changes, some of those issues might be obsolete. But for the sake of cleaning the main repository, I think we can just start moving those there and after that, code will follow. It's not what I would envision, but if people want to get rid of those in a main repo, like we can do that now. I suspect the TMC code will land in the next two weeks there. Okay. Sounds good. So I guess we can just coordinate on Slack on moving the issues then. So yeah, sounds good, David. Yeah, just a question about um, ongoing peers. There were, I mean, when I stopped, when I had to stop working on that, there were a number of um, ongoing peers, which some of which were, I think, at least if TMC uh, has some future, uh, some of which could be, you know, interesting to continue or finish. So my question was, what's the plan for these ongoing peers? Obviously, the related uh, branches are still in the main repo, I assume. So yeah, some of those ongoing peers are obviously related to open issues that will be moved to the, the other repository. So maybe Honestly, it's very hard to answer this because Currently, TMC code changes quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It basically, it still uses the builds on top of the KCP core. It's still not yet a plugin. But in example, there is no sharding code yet because I had to remove it because of the some sinker issues and few other ones. And I kind of have a feeling that these PRs will need to be, you will not be able to lift and shift them to the new repository. So I think we just need to look PR by PR and see what can be done. I would be reluctant to lose the effort putting those. So maybe we need to do the something similar with the PRs and see what we can basically take over and redo erase in the, in the other repository yeah. once the code lands. Sure. Okay. It's like there is a lot of things in air now. I don't think we even have a like established uh, part and how we're gonna work. Will this be part of this meeting or we're gonna separate one or some things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, it's like uh, I'm very conscious that it was like I personally don't want to lose any of the code which was done there already, and it's in, in flight. So when time comes, even authors of the PRs can raise them. If not, we can just try to pick them up and carry over. Yeah. Uh, anyway, feel free to reach out uh, uh, to me if, uh, even if I'm not very present uh, on the community or for anything related to uh, TMC and, and PRs. And unfinished. Yeah, will do. Thank you. Okay. I think that concludes the TMC related discussion. Um, so the last item on the agenda is a short report on upstream. Stefan. Yeah, those who try the rebase, they will notice there is a special control plane repository uh, package. So it's package generic control plane, I think, something like that, in our fork. And it's a copy of parts of the Cube API server. And the effort here, which I described here, the several steps are basically to get rid of that package. It's pretty big. And when you rebase, you will basically compare change for change what has changed since 126 and which lines and copy them over to the to our fork uh, package. And the, the goal here is to get rid of that. So there was an enhancement um, uh, which landed for next cube release. Um, it's about generic control plane staging repository which actually is not super critical for us. So we can we fork cube or we vendor cube anyway. So the main repository, the mono repo. So we don't depend on staging repository, but anyway, it's it's nice to have and it gives us confidence in upstream that the direction is okay. And if you go back uh, to the other steps, some of them landed already. So basically I'm splitting um yeah, the cube API server code. There's a command CMD cube API server in upstream and there is a CMD control plane, which actually, uh, sorry, not CMD, package control plane, which is actually not control plane, it's cube API server. And um, that one, yeah, and I'm splitting it up. So there's an API server uh, package already, which I created, but everything uh, below, like so the instance and the ser services or whatever it is there, that's a big blob of, yeah, mostly spaghetti code, so really, really bad. And um, I'm trying to get rid of those. And um, so one step I did already, which landed the options, which you see there, those are generic already. So there are options in the in the CMD package, and there are those in the package control plane options. And the data, um, they are generic, and the former ones, um, they are for Cube API server. So as an example, what I do, I remove code from the generic part, which talks about services. Services don't exist in KCP. There's nothing about IPs and endpoints and all this, this stuff. So I, I leave that in Kube API server, but everything which is generic, like config web secrets, these kind of things, um, I move to um, the generic part. Options are done. Um, the instance there is not done, so I'm removing stuff there at the moment or splitting them up, cleaning things up, um, and I make progress, so looks good. Um, the end goal is basically that we can get rid of our generic control plane talk package and get rid of a lot of the base work by that. Yeah, that's it basically. And maybe just last comment, the bigger context. Um, we will have changes in our fork around logical clusters. So those will um, I don't think they will go upstream, maybe parts of it, but by far all of them. But our rebase should be focused on those changes, not on the generic generic plumbing of an API server. Okay, great. Thank you for the update on that. Um, and that concludes, unless someone has some comments on that. Last item. Then that concludes our agenda. However, is there anything else you would like to discuss that didn't make it to the GitHub issue? Okay. That doesn't seem to be the case. 
So I'll just put these meeting notes on here. However, now we can take a look at incoming issues. I'm not sure if there was much, but we can take a look and start that uh, tradition again, I guess. Um, and actually, I am a little bit... Okay, these are all new. So, uh, Stefan, you need to guide me, I think, a bit through this process. So the idea was that we go over all of them, right? Yeah, and we, we try to keep it short, so quickly uh, clarify what it is. And basically, it was about labeling, so um, move them out of the status new. Okay. And we just went one by one for 10 minutes or so. Okay. Then, and some of these seem to be quite old, but I guess if we have the time, we can try to do as much as we can, and then we pick that effort up again next time. Yeah, so this one, there's no label over TMC, right? Where, where should I see them? No, there isn't. So it's about pods, which means it's TMC, transparent multi-cluster. So you would just add the label transparent, transparent well, multi-cluster. I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure that's accurate. Um, there is another, uh, I guess actually it did show up uh, in TMC, but really it's a, it's about core, a core function. Um, well, it sort of isn't. Yeah, I guess it actually is showing up in TMC. Okay. Yeah, I guess you can call this TMC. The, I would. Um, if there's some core functionality, yeah, I'm not even sure. I think you can, you could build that. Maybe you have to extend the, the framework a bit, but build it. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of the choice of RBAC that was put in for TMC. Okay. Okay. And we put this on TMC, and it will be part of the migration. Yeah, the status must be changed, I guess. I'm not sure. Does it backlog? We really went for backlog. If nobody really volunteers to start working on it, just backlog. OK. Yeah. There we go. And it's already gone. I'm so. sorry. Actually, there is also already issue one in the other repo. Or there's a there's a contrib something repo, and it has issue one, and it's this. So it was already migrate. Ah, uh, this. Yeah, is it really the same thing? I I thought so. I mean, if it's different, then okay, then it's different. But it, it, I thought they were the same. Pod was a particular example of this, but it's really it's it's the true it's true for all of the resources, the compute resources that TMC defines. Uh, you know the the RBAC that it was chosen uh, to to put in the exporting um, workspace uh, does not support patching uh, sub resources, neither status nor scale. That's strange. Maybe we can uh, discuss and select later on. There was a thread from MJ. I asked why the maximum permission policy matters here. If it does, we have to talk about it. Yes, and I came across this, and, and David perhaps can, can chime in, David Festel, because he guided me to look at the code in the API export view that is actually uh, generating the checks that are consulting that are back, that, that this potter, you know, part of what's going on here. Can okay. we move that offline? So sure. there's a threat in yep. Slack, so we can continue that. Yeah, I think that would make most sense. Okay, uh, improve doc comments, pa package reconciler workload namespace. Yeah, everything with workload is TMC, so same thing. Yeah, true. And parents, multi cluster. Let me put that on backlog for now. Does it work? Um, sync target, that's also multi-cluster already, but it's already labeled, so we just move this to backlog? Yes. Uh, also TMC. Um, I have a procedural question. Since there is a repo for TMC, um, 
which it seems a little odd to have uh, issues in this repo and that repo. Yeah, we changed that. We discussed it earlier. We moved them over. But this is more like in the next days, um, some people will do that. For now, we just label them. So the automation will see the label and move it over. Yeah. So but what we're doing right now is essentially so they get moved over once we do that. Uh, proxy API export identity validation is incorrect. Um, this has compute and workload in the name, but MJ, do you think is this a um, TMC issue? Boy, this was so long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's it sounds generic, I would say. Yeah, there was. Yeah, true. I remember there was an issue, something like that. It's basically where you get into the state where it just validate says like everything is fine, but in reality it's not fine. And you see that from the status, it says status indebted valid, but identity hash is like squashed with something else, like above permission claims. Oh. You have this like random prefixes and everything. So I think there was uh, some string matching in there. Okay, so no TMC. Per no, no, that's, that's basically a generic one. Okay. Was, was the past me smart enough to write how to replicate it? Oh yeah, the wrong identity hash is basically a random prefix hash in the middle of something and that, yeah. Okay. Um, seems to me that this should go into API exports now as an area. Yes, and maybe it sounds not good. Do we have a label like importance? Uh, I can only s wait. Priority, importance, critical, something like that. We don't seem to have. Okay. So maybe we should add those. Um, I'm not sure if those are defined in the info repo, they might be. So I can take a look and see if we can add some priority labels. Yeah. The alternative is we add it to the GitHub project as a field. That would also work. That labels work fine, I think. Okay. But we can dis uh, discuss offline. Okay, I'll, I'll keep this in new so we don't forget yes. labels is important. Yes. Uh, docs pointing to sinker image. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess this is like TMC documentation in a way, but I'm not sure if we are going to publish TMC documentation separately or if it's also going to live on docs KCPIO. So, since the documentation is in this repository, I guess it should yeah, stay. We have, we have to discuss that. It's kind of transparent multi-cluster, I would say, and docs, I'm not sure you can have both. Yeah, it's, it's totally TMC, and this issue has been there forever. Like, we've been pointing to the wrong image, not released once or main once. Is yeah. this a generic it's... issue? Um, you know, since you can't time travel, or, and if you anticipate you've got something that's broken for a while, but, you know, if the release is an immutable thing, it can't reference itself. No. I mean, I guess it could be updated in the kind of like release commit. Uh, that's how I've seen it done. But, yeah. Like add the TMC label and let's move on. Yeah. Like the right so the easiest solution is just to get users to think and look which release they're using and use that tag themselves. Basically fail it themselves. So Yep. And I think actually, yeah, okay. Uh, we actually have priority labels. 
Uh, sorry, they were just not shown. So we have urgent, important soon, or important long term for this bug, revisiting it quickly. Um, yeah, soon at least. Okay, then. It's about consistency, I think. So we should. Yeah. I don't think this bug like raises something, it's just consistency. It says okay, but it's not. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just finish and like we'll just do it, this for five more minutes and then we'll continue next week. Um, yeah. Resource selector based on labels. This is a feature and I guess an API export feature, right? Well, we had a long running epic where this was added into, I think. But that stuff got marinated, basically. So this is what we want to do. Oh, that's OK. I mean, that's still open, right? So. Yeah, yeah, special. we just need to pick it up at some point. Hmm. Okay, I'll add it here. And do we want to put it on the backlog for now? Yeah. And there we go. Resource versus object confusion in APIs. Okay, so this is a mix of document like comments in the code and also. But it's also API. Yeah. And I, I agree with Mike. I mean, technically, this is a wrong use of resource. Okay. Then, since it's part of the API exports, I'm going to add it here. But I guess since it's breaking, it would break the API. This is also not super easy to do. Um, yeah, eventually, probably a good idea. Uh, add a kubectl kcp workspace delete commands. Um, yeah, I, I think the confusion is that there haven't been kubectl create workspace. Like, you couldn't um, customize what create workspace means. So, we had a had to add another command for create. I think this has changed upstream. I think Mashi told me that you can put a command now which is special, I mean, which customizes a create subcommand. So maybe we can get rid of our special create command and by that way be uniform. So if somebody wants to investigate, that should be easy. Just put a kubectl minus create minus workspace in the path and see whether it's called. Okay, yeah. okay. That would be quite elegant. So we have we have area cubes detail, so I guess it falls under that. Yeah. Okay. Um one or two more I guess. Sync resources state should be pending. An API resource import is missing. Sync targets. I think we moved it to TMC. I, do you know? It's already, oh, it's already labeled. Already labeled. So I guess we can just move it to backlog. Uh, okay, I think we are done for today since it's uh, very close to the end. So thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, have a good day, and see you all in two weeks, I guess. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.